You've seen me land a Saturn V on EVE, launch it back again off of that forbidding planet and bring the crew safe back home. You've seen me build a robotic Saturn V, fully complete with launch tower, launch clamps, arms and whatnot. And also after it has launched a pedal mechanism and a rover. You've seen me build the most gigantic Saturn V ever. Fully complete with 50 lunar landing modules that toll around. So what do I do for this Apollo anniversary? Well, I thought this time we had a different route. Not make things bigger, but make them smaller. Yes, this is kind of a Russian nesting doll type of rocket. But uh, basically the star of the show is this thing here, my mini Saturn V. And yes, this is, <laughs> since we once again are in the week where the Apollo 11 anniversary uh, took place. And yeah, also we had some guys like Jeff Bezos flying to space. And of course the wonderful Wally Funk, congratulations that you finally earned your wings and finally got to space. You really deserved it. But back to this thing here. This here is basically a 1.875 uh, meter uh, diameter rocket. And everything on top is inside a 1.25 meter fairing. And yeah, <laughs> never mind that. The Kerbals are sturdy people. Well, are they people? Are they fungi? There's a discussion about that in the community. What do you think? What are Kerbals made of? I think that was also a question in one of the developer videos. Okay, uh, we're now completely off of the topic. But here we are ascending out of the atmosphere and we are on our third stage already. And of course it is capable to circularize and get this thing safely into a stable orbit. Which is definitely above the Kármán line. Well, it would be in real life. In Kerbal Space Program, we are happy when we reach the Kerman line. And the Kerman line, by my definition, is 70 kilometers above sea level. And after this wonderful sunset, we are going to release our fairing and have a look at what's going on after, of course, we've done our Moonor injector burn. And here we are. <laughs> This is my tiny lunar lander and command module replica. Well, you can't call it, really call it a replica. This is even more janky than what uh, the Soviets attempted with their N1 lunar mission. But um, like, <laughs> like the Apollo mission, we are doing a transposition and docking maneuver. We have docked, well, not really with a docking port, but with the tiny little claw that was released in a previous update. And after we decoupled from the third stage, we got kind of stuck and we had to take the help of the wonderful physics of Kerbal Space Program when you activate Time Warp. Okay, here we have a closer look at everything. I really tried to make it as minuscule, as micro as possible. So there are no probe cores in here. Everything is controlled by command seats. There are no solar panels and also no other power generation devices. So I tried to keep SAS off as much as possible to conserve energy. Therefore, there are also no antennas or any other equipment that could draw electricity. The only real resource that we that we need is fuel, of course, and uh, I think we have quite enough to perform our maneuvers. First, of course, we have to get into a stable orbit around the moon. And then, well, since we don't have a docking port, we can't have Jab uh, lazily stroll through the vehicles into his lunar lander. No, we're doing it like the Soviets attempted or wanted to attempt with their LK lander and uh, and lunar complex that they wanted to send to the moon. Basically, they wanted Alexei Leonov to climb outside of the vehicle, climb down to the lander and then detach the lander and land on the moon all by himself. 
So this is even more janky because we're not even using ladders or tethers, we're just using our jetpacks to get to the command seat. And we are already in our descent phase. And look at Jebediah Kerman enjoying this, isn't that great? What I attempted here was to try to land without any instrument. I did not zoom in, I did not have the nav ball anywhere. Yeah. But he's alive! Again! Of course we had to try again. <laughs> this time at least the ascent stage would have survived. Problem is the seat was blocked and I could not board it. Again! And yeah. Again. But then look at this. First of all, this is a wonderful view. Look at the uh, Earth I wanted to say. Look at Kerbin in the background. And then here we see one smooth descent, of course, sped up for your viewing pleasure, down to the surface without any instruments, without nav ball, just by pointing and firing and having a bit of luck, of course. Here we are when we can do what kerbals are supposed to do when they are on the surface. Take some samples and of course plant a flag. The first ones to plant a flag on the moon were of course the United States with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. If the Soviets had had their way this would have been Alexei Leonov that would have planted the Soviet flag. This alternative type of history is also presented in the series For All Mankind and what entails after that very, very different sequence of events around the moon. Have you seen that show? I did watch the first two seasons, uh, or two seasons that are out at the moment, and I quite enjoyed it, to be, sh uh, to be honest. So I I'd like to, to know your thoughts about that. But before we talk about TV anymore, let's talk about getting Jebediah back home. And therefore we have to perform another docking maneuver, or grabbing maneuver. Unfortunately, the claw did not want to connect. Maybe the engine was too tiny, I was not sure, so it could not grab onto it, so I tried to use more force, because more is always better. And then this did not happen, uh, this did not work, so I tried with uh, grabbing it from the side to have a, a broader surface to attach to. And it appears that I attached to Jim and I, <laughs> which spawned the Kraken. Yeah, look at that. I can control Jebediah, but I can't really control the vehicle, but it still appears that the vehicle and him are kind of melded together, they're fusioned, and when I went to the tracking station back, it happened. Kraken thoroughly summoned. And some spaghettification? Again. Anyway, <laughs> luckily I had some quick save lying around. And this time we had a perfect connection. This is how it was supposed to go in the beginning. But yeah, as usual in Kerbal Space Program, you have to try a few times to get it right. And this is a good thing because this increases the amount of agains that I can add into a video. Here we see we dumped everything that we do no longer need anymore. We don't need the lunar module, we don't need the claw, because the only thing that we need now is only our command module and getting back safely home. And for this, of course, we have to do another burn. Uh, what I did not show you here, because it's usually very boring, is transferring the fuel from the lander to uh, the tanks here in the command module. Same with the electricity chargers, by the way. So we have a fully charged and fully loaded vehicle to do our burn home. But we have way enough Delta V, maybe even... <laughs> it would have been enough maybe to even go to Duna or somewhere. But we don't want to go to Duna, we want to go home. And since we are now entering the atmosphere, we're getting rid of the service module part, which is really just the tanks and the engine, and cross our fingers that this three heat shield con uh, construction is enough to protect our astronauts, or kerbonauts rather. 
And luckily it was, but only uh, when, when skimming the atmosphere and then I had to do a few more flybys. Basically, I think it was three or four. I only showed you two here because it's, it's always the same. And unfortunately, we did not land in bright side of things, but we managed to get down through the atmosphere safely with some spinning action. Usually spinning the vehicle on descent reduces heat stress on those parts that are usually, usually very heated up. But here we encountered another problem. I am sinking. The vehicle is sinking and this is not good. We don't want our uh, brave moon explorers to drown. So in our desperation, we are jettisoning the heat shields because they are basically the heaviest thing on this vehicle. And is it enough to ascend? Yes, it is. Look at that red number on top. It is getting smaller, which is a good thing because that means we are ascending again. No, this is not Kerbal Submarine Program, this is Kerbal Space Program. And the only thing that's left to do is for them to be picked up by the rescue team. I hope they can find them in the dark. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.